Uh, I'm a little bit nervous. A little bit nervous recording this intro because in the last video I promised you a day in the life video. But I recorded that day in the life video like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, what, whatever it may be. And when I was editing it, it's just not... I knew it when I was recording it. It's just... It's more... It's very abnormal. It's like an irregular day in the life because it just was a poor rep representation of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. The day was all jumbled up. The work was all different. It just... I wasn't very happy with it, so I kind of sidelined it. Now, I asked y'all in a community post, I'm gonna ask you here again, just uh, let me know if you would like to see that, like a regular day in life. I guess it, I guess it could be a good representation on some of the off, the, the, the more interesting days on the job, but regardless of whether or not I upload that particular video, want to make a regular day in the life video, whether that's me, doing a, a remote day in the life video or an on the job day in the life video because it's the same exact thing it just depends on the location it, for the most part so just let me know if you think you'd like to see that regular day in the life video as well as a regular day in the life video and uh i think we can make something work this video is all about my ubuntu development environment how i set it up and all that jazz based on the top comment on my previous video y'all seem to be very interested in it so figure why not my development environment, starting off with the operating system, it is Ubuntu 18. A few of the tools that I first download when I set up this development environment is Eclipse that you can see is uh, powering up now, and then Visual Studio Code. And in Visual Studio Code, that is where I do all of the front end work. So a lot of it is just HTML, and bootstrap more so than CSS, but CSS when it's necessary, and then uh, Angular TypeScript. So, that's kind of what's going on in Visual Studio Code. And over on Eclipse, obviously we're not going to be looking at any of the code, of course. I use the dark theme because the light theme, I just can't really handle that. And then when it comes to the formatter, the Java code style, as you can see under properties for this project, I use the Google style. And then the save actions, these are all my save actions in case y'all are curious. Can I make this a little bigger? So these are all the save actions that I have, so whenever I hit save, it'll do the proper formatting for me and I don't have to go back and try to make sure everything is just right. It really helps a lot. That's the cool thing about some of these text editors and IDEs is that it does a lot of the work for you. That's the whole point of using this instead of Notepad++. And of course in Eclipse this is where I do all the back end work, all of the Java programming and things of that nature. And then when it comes to the terminal, I don't have anything special installed for the terminal like oh my zish or however you pronounce it, oh my zsh. I have that on my Mac. But for some reason, I just never installed it on here. Maybe I will one day. But what I do when I set up my uh, particular development environment is that I make sure I have Angular CLI installed. I make sure I have my VPN installed. If I come up over here, you can see VPN is off right now. It's because I'm not connected. But those are the few main things. And of course, I make sure that I think Firefox comes pre-installed on this. And then I make sure that I have Google Chrome installed. And then I just installed chromium web browser as well because i'm weird like that and i use a bunch of different browsers at once and then something else to note is that i also run a dual monitor setup at work now of course it's just a laptop but i have two monitors set up this is kind of docked over to the side y'all have seen that before in previous videos so i just have two uh windows going on when it's just on the laptop it just kind of consolidates into into one behind the other now that's basically what i have for my development environment but in order to get to this point you have to install VirtualBox and go through that whole entire process of setting up VirtualBox and then installing the operating system so that's what we'll do now but we're going to hop on uh, this big old computer over here first things first you want to download your Ubuntu image I like to do this first because this takes the longest you come on over to ubuntu.com download desktop if you're going to install or install Ubuntu on your virtual machine just click download simple as that you can see your recommended system requirements over here this is Ubuntu 18 you can also come over to pass releases your alternative downloads and you can go with Ubuntu 16 or 14 I don't understand why some people like to go with older operating systems but I guess they have a reason for it and we're going to be using VirtualBox Oracle VirtualBox for our virtual machine manager if you will so when it comes to VirtualBox platform packages, remember this, this, when it comes to the operating system is what your computer, what your real machine is running and what your VirtualBox will be running on. So Windows host is what we'll be choosing because we have a Windows operating system that we're going to 
install VirtualBox on because as you can see down here we've installed VirtualBox like you can just click on this it'll install VirtualBox this is an, an ex executable file that's what works on Windows although we're going to be running Ubuntu on the VirtualBox that doesn't matter at this stage so once you have the VirtualBox downloaded and then hopefully once you have your Ubuntu image ISO file downloaded once you have the VirtualBox downloaded, you'll be able to install it. It's a simple installation process that we're not going to go over in this video because it just takes you step by step. And hopefully by the end of you installing that, you'll be a little bit closer with your Ubuntu image download. Now you can go ahead and open up your VirtualBox manager. It'll look essentially the same exact as this with the exception that I currently have a virtual machine created on my VirtualBox and you do not. In order to do that, you want to click a new. You want to name this whatever you want so i'm just going to do that because i'm not going to save this any beyond this video type want to make sure that that uh, linux is selected and version we want to make sure that ubuntu 64-bit is selected click next and for memory size what i personally do at work with my 16 gigabyte laptop is that i allocate half of the memory to it so that's eight gigabytes i only have uh eight gigabytes in this whole entire machine and I do run in Windows 8. I do plan to make a new, uh, uh, build a new PC by the end of the year. So please don't judge me too harshly. I figure there's no point in buying more DDR3 when I actually needed it. Because I'll be upgrading to DDR4 or whatever the heck is available nowadays. So we're just going to allocate 4 gigabytes to this. Next, we're going to create a virtual hard disk now. Create VDI. Next. Dynamically allocated. Next. And with this, I just chose a good amount on my work machine. I have 465 gigabytes. I don't know why. That's just what I decided to create. And now you have created your virtual machine within VirtualBox, but you do not have your operating system installed just yet. What you want to do is you see down in storage, you see optical drive empty. What you want to do is click on that and hopefully you will have your image, your ISO file right here. If not, you can just choose this image and essentially find it. Click on that, make sure that it is selected right there because this will act as an optical drive for when we start this, you will be able to boot up Ubuntu and install it. Now, something to note is that you also want to make sure you install guest editions. That will allow this to be a bigger box on the screen because you'll be able to come up to view. You'll be able to auto resize guest display and that'll fill up the entire window or you'll be able to come down here and you'll be able to resize to whatever resolution you want and then with this it's just a basic ubuntu installation you install ubuntu you continue and then we're we hyperlapse when it comes to this just name it whatever you want in your name your computer's name it's just going to be it's, this is your computer the virtual machine is your computer so you can name whatever the heck you want password i'm going to use 1234 you probably shouldn't and then the installation process of ubuntu ensues if you've been following the channel for a while you know that the reason i use a virtual machine instead of dual booting or just having a, a single operating system is because my virtual machine is my development environment and in my development environment i need to access a vpn the client's vpn that vpn does not have internet access so i use my host operating system or internet access and that is the main reason why I use a virtual machine at work now even with what I just showed you the virtual machine is not as good as a host operating system it's still it's still laggy I make sure I watch any video and do any WebEx conferences or meetings on my host operating system but everything that I need to do on the virtual machine does it fairly fine and that is essentially my development environment I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I don't know if any of y'all actually do give it a thumbs up just because I asked you to give it a thumbs up, but say it anyway. If you haven't subscribed already, be sure to do so. If you aren't sure if you want to subscribe just yet, just click on uh, my channel name down there and check out some of my other videos to see if this is a channel for you. Until next time, guys. Have a good one. Peace.